Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we welcome your phone calls. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. Or if you have a success story you'd like to share, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, eat. 4-4-2-3-6-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off the websites as well. You can purchase products or sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team if you want to get your products at the wholesale price. Or if you want to start a longevity business, be an entrepreneur, help change the world at the most fundamental level there is, which is the level of personal health and wellness, and make money at the same time, if that sounds good to you. If working out of your home sounds good to you, if making your own hours sounds good to you, if you want to just supplement your income with $100 a month, $500 a month, $1,000 a month, $10,000 a month, some people are making $100,000 a month, helping change the world, helping move the products, helping inform people about options, nutritional supplement options, and making it easy for people to, to incorporate a nutritional supplement program. That's what Longevity is all about. And if that intrigues you, call 866-735-2470 for more info or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. I want to uh, say a few more things about my personal favorite well, one of my favorite molecules in the body, one of my favorite skincare ingredients, one of my favorite anti-aging supplements. I take it every day. Hyaluronic acid. S stupendously fascinating. So many really cool things about hyaluronic acid. One of my favorite aspects of this really remarkable substance is the fact that it's piezoelectric. It, it responds to pressure by generating an electrical charge. Another really cool aspect of hyaluronic acid is its ability to structure water, to control the, the molecular nature, to shape, I should say, the molecular nature of water, to turn water from this amorphous, uh, kind of chaotic molecular substance, that's what water is, from a molecular standpoint, it's sort of chaotic, but when it, when it reacts with hyaluronic acid, all that chaos, that molecular chaos becomes organized and water becomes a whole different animal, so to speak, a whole different molecule a whole different substance. It becomes structured water. It becomes solid water. Hyaluronic acid induces water to, sol I don't want to say solidify, because when we say solidify, we think of ice, but it's a, a cross between a solid and a liquid. They call it a liquid crystal, and this liquid crystal water is completely different than tap water or drinking water, the kind of water most of us think about. Most of the kind of water most of us think about from a molecular standpoint is sort of chaotic and, and, and crazy. From, if you looked at it under the right kind of de with the right kind of detection mechanism, you see the molecules are all over the place. But when they react with hyaluronic acid, all that chaos becomes structured, and that creates a completely different type of water, a water that can conduct electricity very effectively. 
a water that can, can propel things very effectively. In fact, it's actually thought that the blood is not pumped through the heart. This is the latest thinking in, in, uh, among experts in circulation. It's not that the heart isn't really pumping the blood. The latest thinking is that it's electromagnetics, that the blood is actually moving electromagnetically via the, the conduction power that's generated by the reaction of hyaluronic acid and other things like hyaluronic acid and uh, the water in the blood. So hyaluronic acid is not just piezoelectric, it induces water to become electrical. To, it induces water to become a completely different type of water. Hyaluronic acid, uh, the word hyal actually means glass, it was first discovered in the eyes. Hi, the eyeballs are a rich source of hyaluronic acid, that's where the stuff was first discovered. It was uh, seen as a transparent kind of glassy substance, hyalos means glass in Greek. That's where the name high. It's a type of the, the chemical structure is called uronic acid. Uronic acid is a is a, a standard chemical structure. We talked earlier about glucuronic acid. Glucuronic acid is a uh, is a uh, sugar uronic acid. Hyal uronic acid is a glassy, transparent type of hyal uronic acid with all these incredible functions. But nothing is more important when it comes to hyaluronic acid's functions. Nothing is more important as a, uh, it, it, nothing is more of a claim to fame for this stuff than its anti-aging properties, and that's because it stimulates the production of connective tissue. Yes, it's important for the eyes. Yes, it's important for uh, lubricity and water. And uh, yes, it's piezoelectric. But nothing is more important than hyaluronic acid's amazing ability to turn on the, the production of connective tissue. It's a trigger that activates the connective tissue making cells. And because aging is all about connective tissue, Aging is all about connective tissue. Disease is really all about connective tissue. I'm not going to go into connective tissue. We spent months talking about it, and, and I talk about it all the time, so I don't, want to, I don't want to delve into that too much, but just understand that if you're aging or your body's breaking down in any way, and that includes heart disease and that includes cancer, the two biggest causes of death, rest assured your connective tissue is deteriorating. Hyaluronic acid turns on the growth of connective tissue, and this is where hyaluronic acid gets all the pub whether we're talking for the skin and or whether we're talking inside the body those are the two mace, those are the two places where most people know that hyaluronic acid will have benefits for the joints and for the skin but it's much more than that of course but that's what we, most of us think about at least if we're in the business or if we're somewhat familiar with hyaluronic acid we think about the joints for arthritis and we think about the skin for wrinkles well that's all about the connective tissue the reason it works in the joints is it turns on joint connective tissue. The reason it works on the skin is because it turns on, theoretically anyway, it turns on connective tissue in the skin. You're not going to get that kind of benefit by rubbing hyaluronic acid on your skin. I got to tell you that right now. Right now, there's a lot of companies that will that will kind of trick people, use sort of in, uh, kind of associations. People will skincare companies will they're not gonna, never going to come out directly and say hyaluronic acid it rubbed on in a cream is going to help you with your wrinkles, but they'll imply it because of hyaluronic acid's benefits, but that's not going to happen when you rub hyaluronic acid on the surface of the skin. You'll soften the skin for sure. That's a whole other property of hyaluronic acid is it's, uh, it, it, because it attracts water, it provides a softening and hydrating power. But it's not going to help you with your wrinkles. You got to build your own connective tissue. You got to build your own uh, anti-wrinkle fibers and you do that by eating hyaluronic acid. There's also hyaluronic hyal acid fillers. A lot of women know about that and men. It's a, it's kind of, it's plain old hyaluronic acid, same stuff that's in your skincare products. They just inject it underneath the skin and it puffs things up. But the real way to get your hyaluronic acid to upregulate your connective tissue is going to be to eat it, to ingest it. And it is probably a good idea to do that. Hyaluronic acid is a growth substance. It's a repair substance. It initiates cell division. It's a key player in wound healing and tissue regeneration. All right, we'll take a break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open, 844-236-6010. You're listening to The Bright Side, and we will be back right after this. Okay, 
we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, skincare products, our True Skin Health products, which you can which you can find at Truth, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. If you have questions about the longevity products or the longevity business or comment, success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team by clicking on the Join the Team link or calling the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866 735 Okay, so back to hyaluronic acid. I hope that's not too overwhelming to say. Hyalu means glass. Uronic acid is a type of acid. Hyaluronic acid. Super mega important stuff. Important for the inside of the body. Important for the outside of the body. It helps speed post-surgical recovery. It can play an important anti-inflammatory role, which, of course, Everything's about inflammation. All health challenges are about inflammation. So not only does hyaluronic acid have multifunctional benefits because it helps build connective tissue, it has multifunctional benefits because it's an anti-inflammatory. That means uh, if you're eating hyaluronic acid and you have arthritis, not only are you going to help build your joints, but you're also going to reduce inflammation. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. For anyone dealing with any inflammatory conditions, that's pretty much all health challenges, you might want to think about 100 or 200 milligrams of hyaluronic acid supplementally every day. I have a new supplement coming out, by the way, that's going to have hyaluronic acid in it, hopefully be out here in a couple of weeks. I just absolutely love the stuff. I personally take four or 500 milligrams every day, and I've been doing that for years. Hyaluronic acid is important for recovery, post-surgical recovery. It's also important for healing. For athletes, for weightlifters, for bodybuilders, for weekend warriors, pretty much anybody who's exerting themselves physically. If, if you're a construction worker, or you're hauling, you work for UPS, you're a delivery person, or you're just hauling stuff around, or if you're just living your life. Living your life is a is a athletic type event. Living living our lives is exerting ourselves physically, but especially if you're frail or elderly. Especially give your frail grandparents or great grandparents or, or parents. If they're frail, get them some hyaluronic acid. Have them drink chicken soup. Have them enjoy chicken soup. That's one of the great benefits of bone broth and chicken broth. Bone broth, uh, chicken broth with the bones, that is. is It's rich in hyaluronic acid. That jelly substance, that, uh, not the jelly substance, but if you, when you're making your soup, you'll see it has sort of a thickness to it, a, 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 a kind of a bouncy nature to it. It's not like liquid. It's almost like a solid liquid, which is what we've just been talking about. That's the hyaluronic acid that's doing that up. We call that a gel. That's what a gel basically is. Hyaluronic acid forms these gels, which is structured water. When you're thinking about structured water, it's really gelled up water. And just like gelled up water conducts electrical energy way better than ordinary water, gelled up water or gelled up liquid inside the joints will conduct electrical energy and, and inside the skin and inside the body will conduct electricity much more effectively. That's where the health benefits come from. It becomes much more, the body becomes much more electrical when it has enough hyaluronic acid. And the anti-inflammatory benefits of hyaluronic acid also extend to pain relief. In a 2015 article published in the International Journal of Pediatric Otorhinolaryngology, that just means ear, nose, and throat, Oto, ear, rhino, nose, larynx, throat, ology, study of, otorhinolaryngology. In this article, they found that kids and teenagers who used hyaluronic acid supplements after they had a tonsillectomy had significantly lower pain scores and also faster healing than control, uh, control patients who did not receive the hyaluronic acid. Pain relief and healing and anti-inflammation after you know, tonsillectomy surgery, no reason to think that that wouldn't happen after you have uh, heart surgery or after you have uh, 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 bone surgery, um, heal a broken bone or whatever, any kind of surgical procedure, you're going to benefit from hyaluronic acid just like the kids did when they had a tonsillectomy. And this is for something that's non-toxic, completely non-toxic, no side effects, and it's a, a relatively cheap nutritional supplement. It's, it's a little pricey compared to other nutritional supplements, but it's relatively cheap compared to medicine. Can you imagine if a drug could do all this stuff? What do you think a drug that, that, could, that could build bone, 
build connective tissue, fight wrinkles, reduce inflammation, improve arthritis, anti-age you, and reduce pain. What kind of, what would a drug like that cost, do you suppose? This is, the, this is why nutritional supplementation is so absolutely mind-blowingly amazing. And by the way, that article that came out a couple of days ago about supplements don't help heart disease, you could take that and throw that in the trash. That's a bunch of nonsense. You're going to tell me that all, uh, all the ways that the body uses these nutritional elements isn't going to provide benefits for the heart or any other part of the body? That's the silliest thing. I, I, fortunately, it hasn't made too much news. It made a little bit of news when it first came out, but fortunately, that stupidity hasn't made too much news. The bottom line is, is that these things that we call supplements, including hyaluronic acid, not as well as magnesium and zinc and vitamin C and vitamin A, if a drug could do what these things could do in terms of their benefits and compared to compared to non toxicity, the so called therapeutic window. That would be that would be a Nobel Prize winning drug. That would be a drug that that that's a dream drug. When a drug goes to bed at night and has a dream, it dreams it's hyaluronic acid. It dreams it's vitamin C. That's a, a, a nutrients or what drugs dream they could be. So hyaluronic acid is anti-inflammatory. It's healing. It's anti-aging. Interestingly, hyaluronic acid can actually sometimes. Uh, induce inflammation. It's actually, in addition to being anti-inflammatory, it's actually pro-inflammatory. Different sizes. Hyaluronic acid is found in the body in different sizes. There's small um, HA, small hyaluronic acid. There's large HA. They call it molecular weight, which is technically how much it weighs. A little bit, a little bit more tricky than that, but you can just think about think about it as a weight. There's different molecular weights of hyaluronic acid. There's low molecular weight hyaluronic acid. It turns out that low molecular weight hyaluronic acid is pro-inflammatory. So you say, well, wait a minute. I thought you just said it was anti-inflammatory. Well, yes, it is. But you see, inflammation is just as important as anti-inflammation. We have this misguided idea because of our doctors and our medical model that somehow inflammation is an enemy. And it, in a way, it is when, it's over, when we over-inflame. But you can't heal without inflammation. Inflammation is a major part of healing. So hyaluronic acid, when it's short or when it's small, induces inflammation to speed up healing. And when it's big, large, it shuts off inflammation. It's both. How amazing is that? It's anti-inflammatory when it needs to, to quench inflammation. And when it needs to heal, uh, stimulate healing, it's pro-inflammatory. In the skincare world, we like low molecular weight hyaluronic acid because it penetrates. But you've got to be a little bit careful. Most skincare ingredients will be high molecular weight. It's very hard to find low molecular weight hyaluronic acid, but from a penetration standpoint, you probably want low, low molecular weight, HA. It penetrates better. Still, for HA's most important role, which is uh, lubricating the surface of the skin, most important skin role, which is moisturizing and lubricating the surface of the skin, hyaluronic acid, high molecular weight, hyaluronic acid is, uh, is just as good. And that's what you're going to get most of the time anyway. All right, 844 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We will come back with more good health information and your phone calls as well. 844 is our number. We'll be back after this. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 844 236 6010. 844 236 6010. If you have questions about the Longevity products, the Longevity business, our Truth Skin Health products, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just uh, just want to contribute to the conversation, you don't have to have a uh, you don't have to have a health challenge. I like hearing from you guys. Let's make this an interactive program. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. From the journal Pharmaco uh, Elementary Pharmacological Therapy, taurine for portal hypertension. That's a special kind of hypertension, high blood pressure that involves the liver. It usually, uh, usually involves some kind of fibrosis of the liver, cirrhosis of the liver. Cirrhosis of the liver is a, is a type of fibrotic condition. Pretty much all, when we talk about all health challenges involving the connective tissue, what we really mean is fibrosis. 
And fibrosis is always a sign that the connective tissue is trying to repair itself or over repair itself. And it, 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 it follows a deterioration of tissue. There's certain commonalities that all health challenges, all of them have. This is why the medical model is so absolutely ridiculous to a biochemist or to anybody who understands the chemistry of the body. To a biochemist, your doctor is a bonehead. And I don't want to, I shouldn't say that. To a, to a biochemist, the medical model is based on bonehead science. Let's not make this about individuals. It's just boneheadedness. Clinical chemistry is not biochemistry. Clinical chemistry is the chemistry of test scores. Biochemistry is the, chemi is the chemistry of what really happens. Clinical chemistry is the chemistry of how high or low your cholesterol should be, how high or low your blood pressure should be, how high or low your blood sugar should be, based on statistics. That's it, really, based on statistics and decisions that are made by a, a few people sitting around a table, probably half of them that work for the drug companies, and the other, another quarter of them work for the device companies. And maybe there's a representative of the government sitting around the table, too. That's basically who makes these decisions on whether we get drugged or not, because then... Based on these decisions, we get something called standards of care. Standards of care are what you, the doctor absolutely has to do, what the standard is. Otherwise, he could potentially be sued. Otherwise, he could be uh, potentially be uh, accused of malpractice. So they have this whole malpractice insurance system based on something called standards of care. Standards of care are in turn uh, just determined by the drug companies, representatives of the drug companies, representatives of the medical model sitting around a table somewhere based on statistics, based on numbers. It has nothing to do with what's really happening in the body. What's really happening in the body is biochemistry. What's really happening in the body is not complicated. What's really happening in the body when we're sick is we're just breaking down. The connective tissue is breaking down. The connective tissue is breaking down because it's not getting fed, because it's not getting oxygenated, and because it's uh, accumulating toxicity. It's as simple as that. The three reasons we deteriorate and ultimately sh disease shows up is because we're not getting fed, because toxicity is building up, and oxygen we're not getting enough oxygen. And that's pretty much it, folks. And none of that, none of it requires the intervention by a doctor. Whether it's a, a naturopath or a functional medicine doctor or a regular ma mainstream doctor, these are all things we can do ourselves. Cirrhosis of the liver, which affects m probably 100 million Americans to one degree or, or another. It, it's pretty much the same as fatty liver. Fatty liver and cirrhosis are not exactly the same, but they, they occur together. You don't have fatty liver without cirrhosis, and you don't have cirrhosis without fatty liver. They're, they're pretty much occurring together, even though they're different affects 100 million Americans. You're going to tell me that's the, that when the liver gets messed up, you're not going to get sick? Of course you are. Why does the liver get messed up? Well, aside from the fact that, you know, aside from the alcohol aspect, now we have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease can cause brain problems. It can cause digestive problems. It can cause di uh, insulin problems and diabetes. And by the way, there's a major relationship between the liver and bile and diabetes. This is how the first point on the triangle of disease becomes the second point on the triangle of disease. This is how digestion, uh, uh, issues with the digestive system become issues with the blood sugar system at the level of the liver as well as the intestine. And that's really, if you want to boil all your break, if you want to recover quickly or you want to he help your body heal, work on your gut and work on your blood sugar. Work on your gut, work on your blood sugar. That's why everybody who talks to me whenever they have a health challenge, the first thing I always talk about is the gut. The next thing I'll talk about is the, is, the, uh, is the blood sugar system. There's the third point, which is the adrenal thyroid complex. But really, if you want to simplify it, just go to the gut and then go to the blood sugar system. And then pretty much your adrenal and thyroid issues will take care of themselves. There is a, a, a mind-body component to the adrenal, adrenal glands. And if you're not healing or you're not recovering and you're doing everything correctly, you pretty much can rest assured that there's a mind or psychological or spiritual, mental or emotional aspect that's involved. But aside from that, if you work on your uh, digestive system and you work on your insulin, you work on your blood sugar system, no matter what your health challenge is, you are going to get better. Anyway, in this article from the, um, Alimentary Pharmac uh, from the Journal of Alimentary Pharmacological Therapy, just published, Portal hypertension, which is a complication of cirrhosis of the liver, can, can increase the risk of life-threatening bleeding and, and uh, acetes, which is uh, abdominal swelling, 
hepatic encephalopathy, which is brain problems. Results of this present study indicate that taurine can produce improvement of portal hypertension in patients with cirrhosis. The mechanism of taurine is not known, nor is it known whether taurine could improve the effect of beta blockers. Taurine is an incredibly valuable and underappreciated nutritional supplement and amino acid in the body. Taurine is uh, uh, found in animal products. Taurine is a component of bile. And taurine is super, super important for the brain and the heart for that matter. 100 milligrams, 200 milligrams, 300 milligrams of taurine are a great place to be if you're dealing with heart issues. You want extra taurine if you're dealing with seizure issues. If you're, you want extra taurine, and now apparently, according to this article anyway, if you're dealing with liver issues, you may want some extra taurine as well. The body can make taurine. It's not an essential amino acid, but you can consider it to be a conditionally essential amino acid that you might want to add into your diet. All right, let's do one more, and then we'll get your phones, 844-236-6010. We do have lines open for you. This is from the Journal of Critical Care, again, just published, Thiamine Deficiency and Septic Shock. A study was conducted on 53 patients with septic shock. That is uh, uh, when the blood vessels expand. Shock is when the blood vessels expand, and you don't get blood to the organs because the pressure drops. Septic means that the blood becomes toxic, typically due to bacteria typically due to infection. And a lot of times that infection, by the way, comes in from leaky gut. Although usually won't go into septic shock, that requires some, some pretty serious, a pretty serious infection. In any case, alcoholics, by the way, have a higher risk of sepsis-related problems, sepsis-related death. According to the study, thiamine, a rec in a recent double-blind uh, uh, trial, intravenous administration of, th uh, of, thi of thiamine as they just stuck thiamine, basically stuck it right in the brain, significantly decreased mortality compared to placebo. Thiamine is a wonderful B vitamin. It's especially important for the circulatory system, for the heart. Thiamine is also important for the blood sugar system, and thiamine is water-soluble. And unless you're supplementing with your thiamine, there's a good chance that you could become deficient, thus the importance of your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Here's an interesting little tidbit about thiamine. Mosquitoes hate it. So when you start supplementing with thiamine, you'll notice that you're not getting bit by mosquitoes as much, and you can actually put thiamine in your uh, topical product, moisturizing cream, whatever you use, body lotion, and it will act like a mosquito repellent, natural mosquito repellent. You gotta use it fresh, because thiamine will degrade quickly and it starts to stink, but it, for a uh, short-term basis, in the short-term, or taken orally, it's a great bug repellent. No. We are back on the bright side. I'm Farm Spen. 844 236 6010 is our number. And let's go to the phones and say good morning to Carl the Truth Raider. What's up, Carl? How you doing, man? Hey, how's it going? What's going on, buddy? Hey, these, uh, these season seaweed chips rule. Aren't they good? I ate three packages of them. I know, they're I resistible. Very, I wasn't feeling very good, but I ate. I, Believe it or not, three large packages. I believe Ninety-nine it. cents each. Can you beat that? Well, That's it's seaweed. You can't beat that with a stick. It's yeah. seaweed. <laughs> it's like the cheapest mm. thing on the planet. You know what the secret ingredient in there yeah. is? Uh, you know what the, uh, plankton. Is well, that's not the plankton? secret ingredient. No, that's not. That's what oh. they're made of. The secret ingredient is called salt. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Good old sodium. Good. Well, sodium it's not just sodium. <laughs> it's not just sodium. You're getting lots of good sea salt in there, uh, and yeah, yeah, you're getting. And it's they're basically irresistible, aren't they? Yeah, I had three, three packages, three jumbo packages, two. And you don't and feel I gross. You don't feel disgusting after you eat them. You know, like after you eat a bag of Doritos, no. you feel a little dirty. But you know, you yeah. feel good, right? You don't feel you don't notice any of that that crappy feeling you have when you eat junk food. Well, good job. What's going on today? Go back and get, I'm going to go back and get some more. Anyway, I have a buddy down the street, a business friend of mine, has helped me out in my situation. By the way, I won in court. By the way, yes, <laughs> I'm okay. not guilty. All right, so congratulations. Yes, yeah, so I don't gonna, have to come visit you in jail. A couple of years <laughs> and party. Okay, now yes, I have a friend down the street. His his young lady friend. That's his baby's mama. Uh, she's probably about 22 or 23. Okay. Not much older than that. Very young. Now, stocky, nice little gal. Cute little gal. Yeah. She has a, a completely shot thyroid. Okay. She's a hypothyroid. She's only 23? 
<clears throat> about 22 to 23 years old. What do you mean by completely shocked? Because hy hypothyroidism comes in you degrees. Don't. Okay, well, it's not uncommon. Well, it's shot. The it's hypothyroidism. Allergic to iodine? Well, nobody's allergic yeah, to iodine. Be. Let make sure. She says she, I Make know. sure every I hear that I hear that probably about once every couple of weeks I hear somebody tell me they're allergic to iodine. Let me you yeah. should tell her and tell everybody you know and I'm telling you on the radio and I'm telling everybody else I know and I'm telling everybody's listening here you can't be right. allergic to iodine. It doesn't okay. happen. Nobody on yeah. in the history of humanity has ever been allergic to iodine. You cannot okay. be allergic to an essential nutrient that is illogical. Oh, well, well she she, now some people are allergic to seafood. Some people are allergic to sea, seafood, and they'll yeah. link that to iodine allergy. But you right. cannot be oh, allergic okay. to iodine. So you know okay. it, it gets lumped together. There's so much. There's so much misunderstanding in the world of nutrition, and that's one of the classic examples is when people say they're allergic to an essential nutrient. I've heard people tell me they're allergic to vitamin C. You can't be allergic to an essential nutrient. Period. Okay. End of story. Right. Doesn't happen. You would be oh, dead God. before you were allergic to it. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway. Okay. So, uh, let's, for, let's, so here's yes yeah, solutions. Hunter. Hypothyroidism. First of all, yeah. guess which part of the body I'm going to tell you to work on when it comes to thyroid problems? The gut, the digestive system. There's so many reasons why why this is important. <clears throat> Excuse okay. me. Number one, because uh, the major or one of the important causes, or at least uh, associations with hypothyroidism, is, is Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune problem. There, there are healthcare practitioners will tell you that that eighty percent of hypothyroidism is autoimmune. Autoimmunity is always something that's getting into the blood inappropriately, and and that usually involves a leaky gut. So work with the digestive system. Secondly, thyroid hormone, is, which is uh, comes in two forms: active and weak, or active and inactive, is converted from the inactive form to the active form by gut bacteria, by probiotics. So if the digestive system isn't healthy, you're not going to be activating your T4 into T3, which is one of the reasons why it's absolute nonsense to try to take T4 as a drug, which is what Synthroid is and Levothyroxine is, and every year is one of the top 10 best-selling drugs. If you're not activating it, if you're not turning it on, it's not going to make you better. That's one of the reasons people don't get better from taking thyroid hormone. So you got to work on the gut first. Secondly, you got to work on the blood sugar system. When, the, uh, when you have messed up blood sugar hypoglycemia, uh, low blood sugar, I should say, hypoglycemia, you're going to end up spiking your cortisol. When this cortisol stays elevated, eventually the thyroid will slow down. So you got to work on the blood sugar. You also got to calm the body down, work on adrenal health, calm the body down. There's a major relationship between estrogen, which is a stress hormone, and hypothyroidism. And this is why most hypothyroid patients, by the way, are women. So yeah, work on your estrogen, fat metabolism, progesterone cream, use probiotics, work on the digestive system, get on your nightly, uh, nightly essence, get on your uh, Sweeties product. Use the, uh, in fact, use the entire Healthy Start Pack. Calm the body down as best as you can. SDR breathing, slow deep rhythmic breathing. There's no need for a doctor with hypothyroidism. Right. There's no use for a doctor with hypothyroidism. There's yeah. nothing they can do except give you Synthroid or give you uh, iodine if they're, if they're more, more holistic. But iodine isn't going to make a difference either, by the way. Uh, although iodine is extremely important as a mineral, super duper important. Absolutely. Carl, I want to get to one more phone call, my friend. Thank you for you bringing bet. that up. I appreciate it. Sure. Have a beautiful day. And uh, we'll see if we can actually we'll see if we can get a couple more calls in. Tony in Santa Cruz. Good morning. What's up, buddy? Yeah, Tony. Tony. This is Tony, uh, uh, your buddy. Uh, my buddy Tony. I'm just, to get, I'm just trying to have you guys that you came out with an announcement, I think, a couple nights ago that uh, people. The women with breast cancer don't have to have chemotherapy. Won't yeah, they? isn't that interesting? My wife, my wife died of it. And why? Why isn't that um, big, the biggest scandal in the world over the, for the last hundred years that they've been pushing this stuff? It only works three percent of the time, according to Wallach. It's a and, huge. Um, it's a huge scam. The chemotherapy is huge. It's, and I don't want to say it's a scam, although maybe it is. I don't know the. I don't know if it is or if if it isn't. But it's it's just not fair to do it to fellow human beings. Chemotherapy. Occasionally it works. You know. I'm, I'm, I, 
Okay, you're preaching to the converted. I'm going to take off and, and let you take another call, okay? Okay, thank you so much, Tony. Have a good day. Okay, yeah, thank chemo. I, I don't know if you guys saw that article, but now they're telling uh, patients with early stage breast cancer uh, after they have their lumpectomy or whatever kind of surgery they have uh, that they don't need to do chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is is literally cell death. It literally, all drugs kill cells, but chemotherapy is specifically designed to kill the cells. How in God's name can they think that that's a health tool, a health strategy to kill cells? Yes, you might kill some cancer cells, but you're going to absolutely kill your cells. And by the way, your cancer cells are your cells anyway. They're just rogue. It's craziness. All right, 844-236-6010. I'm going to try and get a couple more calls in here. Francis in North Carolina, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Whoa, that was fast. Hi, yes, morning sir. to you. Yes. Or good day. Um, yes. Quick question. On the acid that you mentioned about earlier in the show, it was a hydro something acid. What is the acronym for that? Uh, it's not an acronym. It's high al u ronic high al u ronic h y that's high a l that's al u u ronic r o n i c high al u ronic acid i know it's a mouthful but it's really important stuff so you might want to practice saying it so you can buy it because it is darn helpful for the body does okay. that help you h y h y a u what again h y a l u like uh-huh. like Imagine you have a friend named Al. Yeah, you know anybody named Al? Unfortunately. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, they, when Al comes over, you say hi, Al. Right? You say hi, Al, and then you go uronic. That's it. Hi, Al. Uronic acid. Simple as that. Does that make sense? You are O and I. Uronic. There, okay. There you go, Francis. Hundred milligrams a day minimum. Thanks for your call. Hope I helped you. All right, Stephen. You get the last word. Stephen in Pennsylvania. Good morning. All right, Ben. Uh, question for you. I remember it was uh, something notable you said that you had some friend, doctor friends who were taking 50 to uh, 200,000 uh, IUs of uh, vitamin D3 a day and getting fantastic results. Where are they balancing that with the... I don't remember a? saying that. That's a huge... I know that there are people who are doctors who are recommending those, those high amounts, but like you, I think you're pointing out vitamin A and vitamin D, that whole ratio, that whole balance. Yeah, what is the yeah. ratio of... A I, I don't know. the. Ra- I actually I don't know the ratio. Maybe one, for every 5,000... Uh, I don't know. It's all B, speculation, like Stephen. Of a or something. Stephen, this is where you run into the frontiers or the edges of, nutri- of the value of supplementation. <laughs> supplementation has value within a certain circle, but you get to the edges of that circle and things like how the balance of omega-6s to omega-3s, the balance of vitamin D to vitamin A, how, how much B-complex you need, how much electrolytes you need. These are answers nobody knows. Is there a book out there? No, no, nobody knows the answer to any of those questions you're asking. Vitamin A are especially interesting because they are they are not really vitamins they are hormones but because they're essential they call them vitamins but they're really hormones but because you need to get them in your diet or supplement with them in the case of vitamin D you get it from the sun uh, they're called vitamins but technically they're hormones and that makes them a whole different type of molecular a molecular animal uh, very very important ones at that but I gotta go uh, if you want to call back tomorrow we can talk about it tomorrow uh, that, that's all the time we have for today and uh, that's how it is on the bright side things go fast thanks for listening I appreciate all you guys thanks for the love thanks for the, the support have yourselves a wonderful beautiful awesome spectacular day I'm Pharmacist Ben we will talk to y'all later bye for now